Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Leonard Skinner is a well-known name, and I have heard a few songs by Leonard Skinner, but today I found out that Leonard Skinner is not a person. It's a band, and the lead singer is not named Leonard. The current lead singer is actually the younger brother of the original singer who died in a plane crash. The more that I learn about this band, the more I am intrigued and I want to know so much more. So today I'm gonna to do my first deep dive on a song that I actually don't think I've ever heard before. Let's get to it. So in this intro, there are so many interesting facets that I want to briefly talk about. Uh, keep in mind that until I did some of the prep work on this, I actually thought that Leonard Skinner was like 80s, 90s. And now I'm like, whoa, they're like, take, you know, 20 years older. And, and even then, like they're, they come from way backer than I thought. Uh, and so in this intro, some of that sound, the way it's a little more, I don't want to say ancient, but I just hear like uh, elements of an older production style, which are really interesting. Right here, one of the things that grabs my attention is the way that I'm hearing different sounds that feel like they're almost in different spaces, right? You have this organ that feels very front and then there's also a little bit of a guitar that feels like it's front and center, but there's something also starting to creep in in the background in this, uh, it, all, it feels really verby in this space, like a lot of resonance. Back one more time. The balance is just continually shifting in a, a very, it feels like it's got an older slide knob on it. And I'm also thinking about how well the instruments are placed. Something about this inspires longing. I really enjoy the way that there's lots of movement that is happening in different instruments, yet we are consistently being drawn towards one main. And sometimes that main will have tons of movement, but sometimes it'll be a little stagnant and let us briefly think about the movement that's happening in other areas and then be drawn back towards that main. I'm gonna go back again. The slide in there just also was super delightful. Feels like a good driving song. <laughs> yeah, I love that part. Whoa, whoa. This, I just gotta point out there's this like, really awesome, like little tiny drop off there. It does a like, just a little slide, but it's quiet, so I missed it the first time. Ah! <laughs> That's so fun. It's a very talkative sound. Still. 
Wow. This is really special. Most of you probably have heard this song before, before knowing too many details about the band. I, knowing that their lead singer, who's singing this right now, passes away in a plane crash, just tragic crash that took out a few members of the band and their team as well. Um, what an amazing first line. Right. If I leave here tomorrow, or I, if I leave here tomorrow, will you still remember me? That's, yep, that's it. Whoa. What a punch. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> and so awesome that we are still remembered. Wow. Wow. If I leave here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So much nasality in that. Gosh, this is fascinating. I love the way we have that cross of guitar solo happening and it's still that movement in the instruments as well. But his voice is, it feels like it's driving home these pitches. It's, and they're not totally perfect too, but that's part of what makes it so appealing. You hear a ton of emotion in it that's really driving through the voice. Uh, and I hear, I hear a, a, t a tension in his sound, yet it doesn't feel um, overdone at the same time. It's got this beautiful combination of uh, opposites in the tone. Okay, I'm gonna go back. This almost feels like early grunge. If I leave here tomorrow and tomorrow, I feel like Eddie Vedder could be singing that too. Would you still remember me? Well, I must be traveling on now. Well, there's too many places I've got to see. I, I like the way the melody has some repetition in it. It feels a little catchy already. I think it's got a, a simplicity to it that lets some of those elements of the drive and there's just like a certain edginess to it. It lets that stand out and sort of stand on its own even stronger. It's pretty cool. Ronnie Van Zant. That's the name of our singer right now. I'm just going to start calling him ooh, Ronnie V. Ronnie Van Zant. What's the short for his uh, for his name? I'm really curious. A lot of people, uh, you know, shorten Dio to just be Dio. Uh, but he's also a Ronnie. So Ronnie Van Zant, do people call him Ronnie? Let me know in live chat, please. I, uh, I'm i not sure how I'm going to how I'm going to call this person throughout this song. Uh, maybe I should go by the full name for now just to be polite. Yeah, he has a ton of soft palate drop in his sound. So soft palate is down and it's going through this kind of nosy area, which gives it a lot of focus on the sound and a little bit of gnarliness. Ha! 
this is one of the things that I like about older music. Okay, this is one of the very, very big things that I like about older music uh, that I would challenge that we need to see a lot more of in modern music. And that is fluidity in the tempo. In modern music, you see stuff that's made to a click track, meaning it's your BPM beats per minute and it is steady. And when you lay your tracks, when you record them to exactly the same beat per minute, um, you can layer it, make sure everything's together. You can be the same person creating the song. Um, that is way easier to produce. There's some pretty cool stuff like beat mapping that you can use in different production tools at this point. And uh, you can use AI to maybe sort of learn what tempo a person is going if they want to do it live and has some fluidity with it. And you can bring that into production, but it just, unless you're really, really, really good at it to a level that I actually don't know if anybody out there feels this way, maybe it's possible to feel it's just as easy with a fluctuating tempo for production. Um, but most producers I've talked to, every producer I've talked to actually says that they like just that steady, steady click a lot better or sections where the click can shift, but not real fluidity. However, I feel that when we lose that fluidity, there's a certain human quality that goes away. And as we start to see more and more AI enter the space, there's so many amazing things that AI can do, but they definitely don't have humanness. So I think that music needs to embrace that, that fluctuation a little bit more. Our heartbeats fluctuate all the time with our emotions. Music is a symbol. It's a, a, an aspect of our emotions. So why shouldn't music fluctuate with us just as much? I really like here the way that when we got to that chorus, it did speed up a little bit. You could hear that there was even a longing in the band to speed up even more. Let's go back a little bit. Back too far, I think. That's okay, it's great. Let's listen again. That's a really great moment. I was wondering what exactly triggered that extra vocal double there. And it's right after he says, I'm as free as a bird now. So it makes me think like he's got maybe two wings or something. There's, That's where the shift in the song has happened is I'm a bird. I'm free. I'm going to go fly. I'm as free as a bird now. And then double here. And this bird you cannot change. Right, there's a just a real authentic feeling of excitement in that tempo. <laughs> and then it relaxes back. Guys, that is that is so special. I want more. And there it does exist in some places in, in current music right now, but I just want more of that, okay? Can we have more of that, please? Thank you. There's like a little crackle in there that just gave me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's it. Oh man, I like, <laughs> sometimes sounds just like have a very physical effect on me and that one, like it makes me feel like I just got prickled. So, um, and like not actually a good way at all. So we're gonna keep going. <laughs> Yeah. I just want to pop.
pause. I'll go back a little bit. That's there is something so wonderful in this guitar solo. I am finding it difficult to put into words why I like that so much. Uh, I think it might be the way that the pitch feels like it's got a basis, but then it very purposefully wanders away. There's some really long slides, but the melody also, even without the slides, just has a, a longing element. It feels very sentimental. <laughs> okay, back just a little bit and we'll keep going. Well. That was interesting. That sounds like the most raised I've heard his soft palette so far. And he accompanied that by adding a little more air into the sound. It just feels very, very intimate there. first just sounded so introspective it and he brought it in right at the very beginning with that air and the the slight shift in the tone quality definitely decreasing the dynamic as well but it yeah it it feels like somebody really peering into their soul oh it's like such a private conversation that I feel really uh, lucky to get to hear <laughs> Really nice layering of it sounds like strings or maybe like a string synth is what it really sounds like in the background there it brings out just a little bit of extra emotion by layering that in let's keep going Exact same technique of doubling right after free as a bird. By the way, are free, am I remembering this wrong? Isn't free bird a burrito? Okay. A restaurant? I wonder if that's named after this. <laughs> Random thoughts. You guys probably know the answer to that much better than I do. Uh, I would never have associated it uh, before now. So that's, that's fun. Uh, Lost the train of thought again. One more time. Oh, strings, motion, doubling that happens right after free birth. Doubling. That's what it was. love the way that you hear instruments in the background that just sound like they want to burst forward. They're starting to go a little crazy, a little stir crazy. It's almost like this bird that's like, I'm, I'm sorry, like you can't keep me caged. I got to go. <sighs> this is, I feel like this is a great anthem for many, many teenagers that are just going, I got to go experience life. I'm, I, most teenagers are, find it very difficult to stick to one thing or one person. Great. 
great use of a diphthong there. Change, right? A, that's a diphthong, meaning it's made of two vowels, E and E, A, A. And uh, he's going A, 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 using both sides of that diphthong to go back and forth on different pitches. Really, really, really fun. <sighs> Nice! I like the way we revved up there. Uh, it definitely got like a, I'm like flying away kind of vibe going on now. Awesome. Also, he used diphthongs in there, uh, fly, yai, yai. There was some other instances where he's really playing with some of that enunciation and the diphthongs very deliberately. Uh, also, I love the way it, his voice, because it's holding out one note so purely, but also driving it home the whole time, we get both of them double tracked in there. They cut really, really nicely in the band sound. Ooh, it's like haunting and piercing at the same time. So it's like a wheel going. Or a train. This is such a good instrumental break. I know, it's a guitar, it's not a guitar solo, guys. It's a guitar duet. I can stop it, I'm allowed to stop it. You guys are probably just screaming at me right now. Um, I, gotta, I gotta talk briefly about what's happening here that I find so fascinating. We're gonna go back to the beginning of the solo section, uh, duet section, and I'll start from there and just let it go until I have vocals back in, I promise. Okay, so. I know we have what I think it's Gary Rossington and Alan Collins. I'd read that they have some sort of iconic guitar solo in this song, but I thought we were going to have a trade off. And instead, it sounds like they're often playing the same melody, doubling it. And then one will just sort of start to unravel on it, and the other one will, will unravel. And but they'll come back. It's this like sort of amazing dance that they're doing together. It is brilliant. I, it's like what I want out of an opera duet, it's, but it's guitars, anyhow, it's so very cool. And I didn't understand it at first. I thought it was just the same player double, but then the way that it was starting to peel apart in different areas is so surprising. It's really, really, really cool. So we're gonna go back and play it from the beginning of the duet section. There we go, perfect. Feels away there. Oh my gosh. And such catchy melodies in little chunks. Yeah. I 
gonna, I'm gonna peel away. That was a really cool breakup of the backing. <laughs> and again. This is going on a really long time, guys. Oh. Whoa. That's better than there too. This is the end of the the instrumental section. Where are we? This is a really long section. I don't know if I can take this anticipation any longer. <laughs> I'm gonna pause it before it gets to the end. I told you guys I wasn't gonna pause until the vocals came back in, not realizing that the vocals don't come back in. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, Elizabeth, eat your words. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we have to go back and catch some of this, talk about what makes it so dang awesome. Um, but first, why? How long is that? I knew it was gonna be long, but oh, wow, that is um, that's pretty epic. That's pretty epic, and the way that they keep taking it to the next level in so many ways, like level up, level up, level up, level up. Whoa. Okay, we're gonna go back, back. <sighs> Look at that. I think this is so funny. I love seeing these uh, this sort of metric of so, uh, basically showing most people are coming back right to here because I think that's where this solo section starts. Okay, uh, we're gonna go back a, a little bit less though because we already talked about that section. So. Oh, that part, it for some reason, uh, it's similar to the Imperial March uh, Star Wars uh, pitches and the rhythm even makes me think of that. So a little Darth Vader creeping in. I think, oh gosh, when did, what, wait, was this written before Darth Vader existed? Oh, life concerns. And that, I love the way they bring that melody back multiple times. Mm. Right, so we've got this driving feeling and it. it just feels like it almost like tumbles as it's going towards the end here. And I love the way that has this bum, bum, bum. They have a, a 
words. They have a break in the rhythm. They switch it up and instead you get these very emphasized syncopated kind of beats that help you take a pause and reinitiate that rule of rhythm. I'll back just a little bit. Yeah. There again. I love the way it almost feels like uh, I've like, like kind of yo-yo that one guitar goes, it's, it's a double yo-yo, okay? You got one guitar that goes woo, woo, woo. It's such a cool effect, brilliant. <laughs> I I feel like this entire section is my brain when I'm really excited about an idea, but I have two possible directions I want to think about that idea in. And it's like, yeah, cool, we got this, like, ooh, we're gonna do this thing, this thing, but what, what about this, and what about that? And sometimes they'll totally link up, and you're like, yeah, good, clear thinking. And then there are other times where it feels like your brain splits just trying to put two bits of excitement together. Anyhow, maybe that makes me schizophrenic, I don't know. It's fine, it's fine. I love being a little bit different sometimes, but maybe you relate. You should let me know if you relate. And if you don't, you can let me know that too. <laughs> You're like, oh, they can't go higher. That was really high. They're about to level up again. There you go. Little Imperial March. I'm bringing back that melody in the background one more time. They come back to these chunks. They're it's like almost like little light motifs that you have in Wagner. Um, and that's the same thing that John Williams has taken and put into so many different movie scores where there's really catchy bits of melody that get repeated in different places. And I'm hearing the same little bits composed throughout here that both, both guitars are riffing on. And I like the way they're pulling at different times too. It's almost like two people dancing. Anticipation! And this is that moment where you say, it's really, it's peaked here, right? They're like, no, <laughs> I <can> go higher. <laughs> Wicked. Oh. That is truly electrifying. And maybe that word came to mind because of the album cover, we're not sure, but it is electrifying. It's just, it feels like you cannot possibly contain any more anticipation and excitement inside of this music and then it just is ready to burst. <laughs> oh. I love this sort of cascading echo pattern that they have in lots of spots. Somebody must have done a piano version of this. This must be incredible live. 
That is so epic. Wow. Like, I love the interweaving of all of these different light motifs, essentially. And I love the way that they keep taking it higher and building the anticipation way beyond, I thought, what level they could hold it at. It was just brilliant throughout. Wow. Wow. And then we go back to the beginning. I remember like, whoa, the sentimentality and the longing of the music. And I love this, this vocal style for this particular band that uh, is not Leonard who's singing. That's uh, Ronnie V. I'm going to call him Ronnie V for now. Please, again, let me know what people call him for short, okay? Let me know that in the comments down below the video or if you're with me in live chat. And if you'd like to see some more classic rock analysis, you can check out this playlist over here. May you fall more in love with music every day.